difficulties, we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. So let's stand up. Let's get up on our feet. We're going to sing about the great things that the Lord is doing in our lives. So, Father, we love you. We welcome you here into this place. We welcome you into our hearts. Father, we ask that you would just come and inhabit our praises, inhabit the, inhabit just all the praises that we're going to give this morning. Father, we love you and we worship you in Jesus' name. Thank you for all the great things that you're doing in our lives. We thank you that you're here with us this morning. 
this next song that we're going to sing is, sing is all about just worshiping the Lord and just having um, a surrender mindset. So if we could just open up our hands to be in a receiving posture from the Lord. Um, there's something so powerful whenever we say, my hands are open, God. My heart is free. And there's also something freeing whenever we say, my hands are open. There's freedom in that. There's joy in that. So, Father, we want to set aside any pride. We want to set aside all doubt, all of our insecurities, Father God. We open up our hands to give them to you. Come and take it and make it beautiful, Father. Take our ashes for your beauty, Father. We worship you. We magnify your name, Jesus. Come and do what only you can do, Jesus.
Sunday, um, the Sunday before Easter is known as Palm Sunday. And um, when Jesus came back to Jerusalem was this, this Sunday, this day. And they were waving palms at him and laying them down for him to walk on and he comes riding and scripture says that he came boldly and he came confidently and triumphantly. And we get to do that same thing, not just on Palm Sunday, but every Sunday. And, um, and he also came boldly and confidently knowing what he was gonna be up against. He knew he was up against persecution and, and the crucifixion and all those things. He knew what the Father had for him, but he walked boldly in that because he knew the Father was gonna take him through that. And so I challenge you this morning, life is full of so many different seasons, but knowing that the Father is with us, if the Lord can be with Jesus through the crucifixion, he can be with us through any kind of financial situation, any kind of stress, any kind of anxiety, worry, anything. He's there right with us. But just like that song says, we have to put our hands out. We have to be open to that. And this next song that we're gonna sing talks about magnifying Jesus and making his name bigger and bolder in our lives. And the author of the song, I heard him say, you know, if you've ever played with like a magnifying glass and the sun shines on it just right, it starts a fire. And that song came from him wanting Jesus to spark a fire in him and to get rid and to burn the things that Jesus doesn't want in our hearts but to fan the flame for the things that Jesus wants to keep in our hearts, you know? We all have ashes, we all have the ugly sides of us, but Jesus wants to make it beautiful. And he wants to make it whole and he wants to make it righteous. So as we sing this song to him, he's doing that in our hearts. He's changing our hearts and he's, he's molding us into who he wants us to be and who he's called us to be, amen? Which is, we're all called to be worshipers. We were all created to worship. So as we sing this, let's keep that in mind. And I challenge you to, to worship. And this morning, I just kept hearing um, the word pride. I don't know why, um, but I feel like that's easy to get caught up in during worship because Satan wants you to be prideful and he wants you to think you have it all going on and that you don't need a God to worship, but you do. We all do. Amen. Father, we worship you. We humble ourselves before you. We bow at your feet, Jesus. There is no one like you, no one beside you, Father. We bless your name.
how about we give Jesus a big hand of praise? Amen, amen, amen. Hey, just remain standing, and if, if you want to play softly, because uh, as Brittany was sharing about Palm Sunday, I just have to tell you this, because this so much relates to the message I'm about to share. But the story behind the story, if you will, Palm Sunday when Jesus was glorified, rode in on the donkey, and they laid palms down at his feet and worshiped the King of Kings and said, Hosanna, Hosanna, you know, and they welcomed Jesus. It was, it was Jesus's most glorious moment on this earth. But the story to that in the book of Luke talks about how Jesus pulled two disciples over. The Bible doesn't name which two disciples, but he said, hey, go into the village over there across town and you'll find a donkey tied to the tree. And I want you to loose that donkey and bring him to me. And if anyone asks you, why are you doing this? You tell them because the Lord has need of them. And if anyone asks you, why do you go to church? Why do you go to Life Spring? Because the Lord needs you there. If anyone asks you, why do you share your story with others? Why do you witness to people and tell people about Jesus? Because the Lord has need of you to do that. Man, I just want to leave you with that thought. And because two disciples obeyed what Jesus had to say, Jesus was glorified. And when we obey what Jesus has to say and what God has to say in his word, they get, they get all the, Godhead gets all the glory, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen? Can we give God one more hand of praise? Give somebody a high five, a fist bump, a handshake, whatever you do on your way down to your seat. God bless you this morning. Oh. Amen. Thank you, musicians and singers. One more thing as I, I'm pulling out my card. I keep my card in my wallet, and I want to just ask you, did everybody get a chance to get an index card this morning? We want you to make sure you have it, or maybe you have one from last week. If you did not get an index card, just slip your hand up in the air. We want to make sure you get one. Okay, ushers, if you can make sure these get index cards, thank you. Just slip your hand in the air like you just don't care. Man. And it's, and ladies, if you keep this card in your wallet, if you keep, I mean, in your purse, guys, if you keep it in your wallet, every time you go to pull some money out or make a transaction, you're going to be thinking about those three names that we're going to share about today. of Easter, and uh, so I just, I just challenge you to get excited about that, get ready, and bring somebody to church. 80%, you got an 80% chance. You know how the weatherman says 80% chance of rain? Sometimes he's right, sometimes he's not. But you got an 80% chance that someone will say yes if you invite them for Easter. Mo a lot of people are looking for a church to go to for Easter. Now, one more thing before we get into this message. If you helped us serve yesterday at our outreach, could you stand up to your feet? We want to give you some praise, and thank you so much. You helped serve and reach a neighborhood for Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Some of you are at home because you spent so much energy yesterday. You were too tired to get up. God bless you. You may be watching this at 2 o'clock this afternoon, but God bless you. We thank you. And we also want to invite you that are tuning in to our uh, church, and, and thank you so much. This morning, I want to visit about discipleship with you. Uh, the first week, we named the series NVT because if you take the word invite and you take the I out of the picture, come on somebody, take self out of it, you realize that you're here on this earth for Jesus and everybody else. You're not here on this earth for I, right? Take the I out of the word. And then we said take the E out of the word, which E stands for excuses. 
Well, I would share my story with others. I would share the gospel with others, but I just don't have time. I just don't have the resources. I don't know how. I didn't go to Bible sir, st- uh, college. I, I, didn't, I don't know that. I, I, my kids, you know, I've heard them all, right? <laughs> but it, we are commanded by God. It is an assignment. It's like if we were all in the military. Remember that song? In, some of you grew up in Sunday school. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. Remember that? Well, if we're all in the Lord's army and the the commander-in-chief has said, this is a command, and we say, well, you know, I I just don't have the time or I just don't have the, you know, it's not good to disobey the commander-in-chief, amen? And so this is a command I want to share with you, and it's in Matthew 28. Our our assignment, first of all, that we, we say at this church is to win one in 21. Come on, let's say that together. Win one in 21. One more time. Win one in 21. And this is in the Bible in Matthew chapter 28, a very familiar passage, and it says, Jesus came and told his disciples. How many of you are God's disciples? Amen. If you, if you're, if you can't raise your hand, we're going to give you an opportunity to join in our family and be a disciple of Jesus Christ. He, he came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. And in another passage, he said something similar to this, and he said, I've been given heaven uh, all authority, and I give it to you. He, so, but this is, by the way, this is the last thing Jesus said before he ascended into heaven. I think it's pretty important. You know, uh, when people are on their deathbed, and this was not the case with Jesus, he had already been on his deathbed on the cross, and he rose again and ministered for 40 days just to show everybody he conquered sin and death in the grave, and he ministered for 40 days, and then he was ascending into heaven, and he thought this was so important. These are my last instructions to my people. He said, I've been given all authority in heaven and earth. And so he says, therefore, go and Now, I want to emphasize to you that's a little more than go and see people get saved. That's important. That's the beginning step. But how many of you know Jesus said, go and make disciples, which is what I'm going to talk about today. Go and make disciples of all the nations. And I explained a week or two ago that the word nations in the Greek is the word races. Go and make disciples of all races. Doesn't matter. God is not prejudiced. He doesn't care if we're dark, light, in between, or some weird color, right? We are all created by God for his pleasure and for his purpose. So he said, go to all the races, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and he makes us a promise. He said, teach these new disciples to obey all of the commands that I have given you. And be sure of this, I'll be right there with you. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be scared. You don't have to be shy, because Jesus is right beside you when you're trying to convert someone to be a disciple of Christ. Amen? Amen. That's good. And he said, I'm with you till the end of the age, even long after you're gone. You know what my prayer is? That long after I'm gone, if Jesus hadn't come back yet, that, that um, the, the, the mark that I left on this earth will continue to carry on through people that I've discipled for him. Long after you're gone, hopefully if Jesus doesn't come back, the mark that you've left on this earth and the disciples that you've, that you've uh, brought into the kingdom will carry on for his glory. Amen? Isn't that, isn't that a, a sign of a, a good teacher is that the student does better and, and then they make disciples, right? So I want to share what discipleship really is this morning because it's, it's kind of a, a, a big word, discipleship. It actually means... It actually means disciplined ones. And I have to say this, before you can learn to disciple others, you need to learn to disciple yourself. That's one of those personal trainer things that's not comfortable. If any of you ever have a health coach or a personal trainer, he doesn't tell you, hey, would you come over here and uh, eat this whole pizza and sit on your couch and watch TV all day? Yeah, that would be easy if you could do that. But he doesn't say that. He says some things that are, hey, you're not going to be comfortable, and after I get finished with you, you're going to be a little sore working out. 
But you just keep after, you just keep working out, and you're going to, before long, you're going to look back and say, look how far I've come in, in my physical training. And the same is true in the spiritual things. It's not always comfortable to do what God calls us to do. Was it comfortable for Peter to step out of the boat and defy the laws of physics and walk on water? No. And it didn't make sense. And for a circumstances come on somebody and begin to sink and so what we hear in the word sometimes doesn't make us comfortable but it's good for us does anybody really like to eat kale <laughs> you do really okay good for y'all man good for y'all only three hands went up on that I hope more hands go up on salvation in a minute but most people just don't like kale, but we know it's good for us, so we eat it, right? We mix it in a salad. We try to do whatever we can to disguise it, change the taste of it. Or maybe I could use Brussels sprouts. Who, okay, that's what you like. Man, you just like it all, Zeke. Good for you, buddy. You're healthy. And Mike, you too. Man, Brussels sprouts, my mom used to serve us, and she'd just boil them and put them on the plate. And My mom is an excellent cook, but she didn't. She didn't apply her cooking skills to Brussels sprouts. She just, <laughs> me and my cousin, we go, oh, footballs. We're eating footballs again. They look like little footballs. I'm like, oh. But now you go to a restaurant, and man, they trick them. They fire roast them and smoke them and put candied pecans on them and bacon. And man, those Brussels sprouts are pretty good, you know. But, uh, but discipleship sometimes is is hard to do but you got to disciple yourself you got to be a disciplined one yourself so i encourage you i implore you i implore I implore you i don't employ you but I, I but spiritually i do implore you to learn to spend that personal time with god learn to spend that prayer time with god disciple yourself first and get in that habit and it'll be easy to disciple others because you'll be hearing from god right so let's talk about the three the triangle, if you will, are the three sides of discipleship. There's three sides to this. And the first one I want to share with you is fellowship. And I'm going to kind of share a personal story. By the way, people ask me from time to time, have you won anybody to the Lord lately? And my answer is, I don't know. And here's why. Because you haven't won anybody to the Lord until they make it into heaven right? Even if you lead them to the cross, you lead them in prayer, you, you, uh, they, they become saved. And I'm not going to get into theology. I'm not going to, are you an Arminius to Calvin? I'm not going to get into that deep stuff right now. But I will say this. There is a word in the Bible called apostasy. And those that choose to walk away from the faith, Judas was an example of that. He walked away from Jesus and betrayed Jesus. Okay, there are examples in the Bible of people that walk away from the faith. So I personally believe it is possible to say, no God, no thanks. And sadly today, there are many people that have been in church before, that have had encounters with Jesus before, that are now saying, no thanks. Maybe you know somebody like that. Don't give up. Don't ever, ever give up. Just because the fish aren't biting, you keep on casting, and you'll get one, right? But fellowship, doing life together. The literal meaning of the word fellowship is, I remember my dad made a commercial. He had a church in Garland for a while, and, and it said, what is fellowship? Because the name of the church was New Life Fellowship. And uh, so it was, what is fellowship? Well, it's two fellows getting in a ship, doing life together, you know. And that, literally, that's the name. Anytime you see a word that says ship it's like like championship it's like two champions getting in a ship you know or fellowship two fellows getting in a ship or you know mentorship two people that want to learn getting in the same ship so it's fellowship two fellows getting in a ship and this is not geared for men ladies it's for you too two ladies getting in the same boat doing life together and i will have to say and commend you that this church is very good at fellowship 
And if you want to picture this message like a swimming pool, this is that shallow end. Fellowship is the beginning of discipleship. And if you try to disciple someone you don't know, it may not work. Jesus made sure that he had 12 fellows that he had did life together with. That he spent time, that he did things they were interested in, like go fishing with them, go uh, camping with them, go eat with them. And you see this all through the Gospels. We need to not live in a cocoon. I know we just got through COVID and all that, but I will say that I'm very confident in this church that to my knowledge, people that are regular, regularly coming to this church, nobody got COVID here. And we continue to pray Psalm 91 over all of you and your houses. No plague shall come upon your dwelling. <laughs> Praise God. God answers prayer. And we still did life together. You know, we're supposed to be social. I was thinking about this this morning. You know, there's going to be no social distancing in heaven. Praise God. Thank God. You can hug people in heaven. You can hug people here too if you want. I don't do what you want to do. But doing life together. Let's look at some scriptures. Acts 2, famous one. Remember, Peter just preached a message. 3,000 people got saved. So what are you going to do now? Make disciples. So they worship together at the temple each day. Well, wow, imagine if we had church every day. But you know what? Amy just said, woo, because she's already... You know, just having once a week and then small groups is like enough for her. But, but, uh, but imagine, but, but you can have church every day. You can bring the church to the people at your workplace. What we did yesterday in our outreach is we brought the church to a neighborhood called Breezy Hill. And we had a great time doing it. And we reached out to people. And Daryl's pretty good with, uh, he works with the sheriff's department and he's pretty good about calculating numbers. He said there was about 400 people there. Praise God. 400 people we were reaching for Jesus. And, you know, well, we put it in a language that they would understand. We had the Easter Bunny, even though we don't believe in the Easter Bunny, but we know the kids love the Easter Bunny dressed up. He got on his horse and he rode around. Only in Texas. <laughs> only in Texas will you see the Easter Bunny. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but it's one of the musicians up here that looks like Dave Ramsey. I'll just tell you that, all right? And he was great at it. He was great being the Easter. All the kids just flocked over there to the Easter Bunny, and it was a good way. And I was passing out tracts, and other people were inviting people to church and telling them all about Life Spring Church. And the number one question I got from the neighborhood, and you should have read the reviews, by the way. Amy is in their neighborhood uh, whatever, uh, whatever that is, chat room or whatever, and they had nothing but good to say about Life Spring Church, and thank you so much for the <laughs> reaching out. But this is what they did in the, in, the, in the book of Acts. They worshiped together in the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper. They shared communion. They shared their meals with great joy and generosity. You know what? Some, some of you, after this service, you can't wait. You're hungry right now, and you wish I would cut this off pretty early so you could get to the restaurant and fellowship with others, right? Maybe one or two. <laughs> Amen. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you for that. I'll try to make it quick. <laughs> but it says, all the while praising God, keeping a good attitude, enjoying the and each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who are being saved. That's what fellowship does. And you know what? You'll be able to reach people a lot easier as you have fellowship and relationship with them. Look at another scripture. Uh, uh, Ecclesiastes. Two are better than one because they have good reward for their toil. You know, that's another good thing about discipleship is somebody when somebody's going through something, somebody else maybe has just been through something, or somebody else is going through the same thing, and they can relate and, 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 share, and share their story with each other and minister to each other. Uh, look at one more scripture, Romans 15, 5 and 6. May the God of endurance, oh, I love that. We're not called to a sprint, y'all. We're called to a marathon. 
We run this race as a marathon. May the God of endurance and encouragement. Those of you that have run marathons, I've never been uh, privileged to do that, but some of you have, and you know the, the power of the people standing on the sidelines just cheering you on and holding out a cup of water. And don't make the mistake in case somebody's holding out their cup of coffee. Don't grab that in the marathon. <laughs> grab the water. That was an old Seinfeld episode. I just thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> but don't, but it says, May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So let's look at the second or a little bit more deeper in that pool. We started in the shallow end. Now we're going a little deeper. Deeper than fellowship is relationship. What's the difference, pastor, between fellowship and relationship? The difference is now you're not only doing life together, but you're doing life together and meeting each other's needs. We always share in our marriage counseling that the whole key is Philippians 2. Set yourself aside and serve your spouse. And if you will do that, it's the best marriage counseling that's been working for thousands of years. Set yourself aside, focus on what she needs or what he needs, and serve the other one. That's what the Christian faith is all about, isn't it? And we can do that even outside of a, a marriage, but we can meet other people's needs that have needs and reach across and help them. Amen? That's what relationship is all about. That's what Jesus did. Jesus saw need after need after need after need, and he went around doing good, the Bible says, healing the oppressed, setting them free. And so, let's look at some scriptures on relationship. Galatians 6, 1 and 2. I love this. Dear brothers and sisters, who is Paul talking to here? The church. Those that belong to Jesus. If another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should point the finger and condemn and judge them out of the church. Not even the message translation says that. It's the opposite. If you know someone that's overtaken by a sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly, in other words, lower yourself. In other words, say, can you help me with my problem I have? I need your help. And share something that you're not good at in your weekend and one of your sins and say, can you help me with that? And maybe they'll just open up and say, you know what, I need help with this issue. That person back onto the right path and be careful not to fail into the, uh, fall, sorry, into the same temptation yourself. You know, oftentimes when we get in the flesh and, and, and we want to do this to somebody, Oftentimes, we'll commit that same sin we just went, aha, because we have the same temptation and we fall. And it says share. Can you say share? Share, share each other's burdens. In this way, obey the law of Christ. That's caring about what someone else needs and reaching out and helping them with it. Another scripture here, and there's many of them, Galatians 6.10, a few a few uh, verses later. There, therefore, we're ev whenever we have the opportunity, when? Whenever we have the opportunity, whenever we see a need, and if we'll get our radar up and we'll be looking at the grocery store and looking at the bank and looking at the gas station and looking, we will see needs all over the place. Whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone. Well, pastor, that person is just way off in sin, and I can't help them. Yes, you can. Love never fails. Grace never fails. Love and grace and mercy and help, most people don't turn that down. We should do good to everyone, especially to those in the church. Listen, if you know someone that has a need in the church, don't be afraid to reach out. I can't tell you how many times somebody has come to me with a need, and I'll pray about it, and then next week they say, you don't need to pray anymore. So-and-so came up to me in church and blessed me. It, it happens all the time. 
You know why? Because there are people that are listening to God in their devotional time, in their discipline time, in their discipling of themselves, and they sense a need for someone else, and they reach out and help them. And I love that. I love that. One more scripture, Romans 12, about relationship. For as, one, as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. Aren't you glad for that? Yeah, I'm looking around at, at each and every one of you, and all of you are unique. Not one of you looks like the other person. Thank God, right? If we all looked the same, man, it'd be so boring. If we all acted the same, said the same thing, it's kind of like watching the news. It's the same thing over and over. It just gets boring. It just gets old. It just gets like, you know, I don't even watch it anymore. Same old, same old, you know. But, uh, but, but, but in, our, in the body of Christ, we all have different things we're equipped with and gifted with and talented with that we can reach across and share in at Christmas time, kids love to get gifts. And that's kind of the highlight of their year, right? They love kids, grandkids, they love to get those gifts. But in God's kingdom, the whole purpose of the gift that God gave you is not to open up and keep for yourself, but share with everybody else. He gives you that gift so you can channel out and reach others with the gift that you have. Some of you are extremely gifted musicians and that's why you're up there and you're reaching out to other extremely gifted musicians and I applaud you for that some of you are extremely gifted in your generosity and you're reaching out and helping people in different ways some of you are gifted in in uh, all whatever whatever the gift is that you have some of it prophetic and you prophesy some of you in in uh, prayer and you pray for that person some of and, and whatever it is keep on doing that keep on reaching out and blessing others, because that's what the faith is all about. It says, for we uh, are many, but one body. We're one. And individually members of one another. And so, last one, and this is going into the deep end. Discipleship starts with fellowship. It gets stronger with relationship. And then it turns into the third leg, leadership. That's why we use the phrase... Have you led anyone to Jesus? Our whole purpose on earth, our whole, everything that we were created to do is designed to lead people to Jesus. But there's more than that. We should not only lead people to Jesus, but we should, we should lead people to church. You know why? Because the church will fill in the gaps where maybe we don't know what to say to how to disciple someone or how to uh, fill in the blanks of scripture that we read or, or that, that we don't understand or maybe in a collective body there's somebody with a gift that will help fill that in. We need to lead them to Jesus. We need to lead them to church. We need to lead them to baptism. Amen? We have, if you're watching online today and you need to be baptized, if you're sitting here today and you need to be baptized, you've never been water baptized, I'm not talking about being sprinkled on as a baby. I'm talking about really dunked in that symbolizes death to the old man and a resurrected new life to the new man. If you've never done that, we've got Walmart's finest blow-up hot tub, and we'll be glad to do that with you. And we do that occasionally in church. So just come to us. Praise God. We don't, have, we don't have a fancy, you know, marble in case, stained glass area for baptism. But we don't need it. We just need something that holds water. So we paid all of 355 bucks or whatever it was. And we blow that thing up. And we fill it with water. And it heats up. And it's actually a, a if anybody needs a, a cheap hot tub, it's actually the, least expensive one you can buy, but you can't have ours because we use it. <laughs> and no, the pastor doesn't sit up here during the week soaking in the, <laughs> no. You got too much work to do. Jesus, church, baptism, the fourth one, prayer, lead them in prayer. 
That's why I say we've got to be leading ourselves well and we can reach out to others and lead them well. Lead them into prayer. God answers prayer. Uh, a couple days ago, the weatherman, who we know is always right, <laughs> said it's going to rain on Saturday between 2 and 5, you know, 80% chance. And a few of us prayed, God, please let that be after 8 o'clock. Please just let us do our outreach and, and just, and the skies got cloudy, they got dark, and someone even said, oh, look at that. And I said, I'm not worried about that because I already prayed about that, and that's not coming here. And guess what? Not one single drop. Praise God. This man up here, my dad, pastored in Hawaii for 26 years. It doesn't it? Because you may have been on vacation and it's paradise, but living there is a different thing. Yeah. My dad and my mom back there, they, they, uh, they suffered for Jesus on the island of Kauai. I always like to say. <laughs> That's kind of funny to us, but truly, it's, it's really a mission field. A lot of unsaved people. A lot of people need Jesus in Hawaii. And they were so faithful to do that. And my dad decided when the newscast said, there's a major hurricane coming to the island of Kauai. He called up some local pastors and said, let's do something about this. And they went to the south shore, and they held out their hand, and they prayed. And they rebuked the storm. Didn't Jesus rebuke a storm? And didn't Jesus say, all authority in heaven I give to you? And so, G and so he, and, and if Elijah, a man, can call down rain, why can't a pastor with complete faith hold up their, their hand and rebuke the storm and say, turn away from this island? And the news reported the next day, strange thing happened in the newspaper. A hurricane headed for Kauai took a sudden right turn and veered away. Now you can say, oh, that's a phenomenon of nature, and you can explain it all kinds of scientific ways. But I say prayer works. Yeah. Amen. So lead them in prayer. Lead them in baptism. Lead them to church. Lead them to Jesus. Lead them in devotional time. You know what? Uh, people, when they... It's like, it's, we, we call it a baby Christian, right? I've got two great grandbabies, and one of them is learning how to feed himself. Did I, no, I meant, I meant grandbabies. Not, not, I'm not a great grandfather, <laughs> but, but I think I am a great grandfather. You have to ask Brittany and John if I'm great or not. I don't know. But I'm not a great grandfather like my dad is. He's a great, he, he, in fact, you can call him Merv the Great if you want, because he really is a great grandfather. I mean great as an adjective. Is that right? Adjective. Yeah, a, a, a good, let me say, a good grandfather. I try to be a good grandfather. And so, uh, but, but the little one, she hasn't learned to feed herself yet. And the same thing is true when we lead people to Christ. We lead them to church. We lead them to back. You see how it's just more? than just leading them in the sinner's prayer. Discipleship is more. We lead them in baptism. We lead them in prayer. We lead them in devotional time. And we teach them how to feed themselves. Just like all you mamas have done a fantastic job. Hopefully you don't have a 35-year-old baby at home still sucking on a bottle and it parts his mustache. Hopefully not. <laughs> at some point, as Christians, we got to learn how to feed ourselves. Uh, time to time, I, I, most, most people, I don't, I don't, you know, they come to church and they say, man, I, I get fed here. And then most of y'all are, are great. But every now and then, I'll get one that just, they're <laughs> usually not paying attention. And I can tell because they're usually on their phone or usually, and, and then they say about a year later, I just don't get fed here. Well, I wonder why, you know. But usually what I say is, have you learned to feed yourself? Because I offer food every week, it's up to you whether you eat it or not, you know? And, and besides that, it's not enough to eat once a week. If you eat once a week, you'll be looking like my Uncle Lester, who is the skinniest guy I've ever seen. Those of you that don't know my Uncle Lester, I think he has a tapeworm. I tell him that all the time. He's got a tapeworm down there, and he's skinny, 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 skinny. But you've got to eat more than once a week. You got to eat during the week. You know, get out, spend 10 minutes, get in the Word, pray, devotional time. Then you got to lead them to the Holy Spirit. 
There's more than just being saved. I like to say it's like a, if you want to hit a home run with God, don't just stop on first base. Make that turn. There's more than salvation to this life. There's the Holy Spirit. And for a lot of people, it's the God they never knew. It's the part of God that they never knew. The Holy Spirit has gifts for you. Guess what? It's the Holy Spirit is Jesus' gift to the church. He said, when I leave, I'm going to give you this comforter, the Holy Spirit, and you have so much you can enjoy from him. And if you just read about the fruit that he brings, it's love, it's joy, it's peace, it's patience, it's kindness, it's gentleness, it's, it's self-control, it's faithfulness. I need all those things. And as I experience the Holy Spirit and invite him into my life, then I get to enjoy the things that he has for me. And if you've never experienced some of the things that the Holy Spirit has to offer, I challenge you to pray with an open heart. Say, God, no matter what I was brought up in or taught in a denomination or whatever, I want to understand what the Bible says. And I want the Holy Spirit in working in me and through me. Just baptize me in your Holy Spirit, Lord. There are some prayers that God just won't turn down. No, I'm not going to baptize you. I'll baptize everyone. God doesn't say that. If you're willing, and, and guess what? We don't either. If you want to be baptized, you let us know. Water baptism. If you want to be baptized with fire, as the Bible calls it, baptized in the Holy Spirit, we'll pray with you about that too. And then we need to lead them to the principles of the Word the principles of the word and a new way of living. You know, sometimes I talk to people and they say, man, you know, I'm just not, just not happening for me, you know, and, and I'm doing this, this, and this. Well, and I say, how's it working for you? Because inevitably, it'll be a way of living that satisfies the flesh or satisfies me or self and God's way of living is say, hey, don't do that. Don't feed the flesh. Feed the spirit. I'll close with this story. Musicians, if you want to come up or if it's just Amy, I don't know what the plan is today. I'm just the pastor. I don't know. But, but there was a, my dad pastored for 20 some odd years in, in Garland, Texas. And then he went to pastor in Hawaii for 26 years. Might, might have been 26 in Garland. You know how long it was in Garland? 20, 23, 23, 21, 23, 23 years. So it's like I told my dad one time, a mar marathon is 26 miles and a little bit more. I said, you've done two marathons in your life. You pastored in Garland for nearly 26 years. You pastored in Hawaii for 26 years. But when he was in Garland, I was the pastor's kids, a a a kids and I didn't he always make the right choices. Neither did you, Rick, or Cynthia, you know, my brother and sister, but y'all would, would say, you know, I'm not telling you anything new, right? Yeah, I've told you a lot of my mistakes. But there was one time I made a right decision, and it was because I noticed a guy sitting on the back row, and his name was Doug. And Doug would come into church. He was real curious about the things of God and the things of, and he'd been to churches before. He was just real curious about things. And so somebody got out of their comfort zone. Me, I was just a shy teenager at the time. And I went back to Doug, and I started talking to Doug. And I began to fellowship that first leg with Doug. And we began to find out that we had a lot of common interest. He loved golf. He loved softball. In fact, we began, back, believe it or not, back then I played on the church softball team. If you start a church softball team, don't invite me today because there's a lot of people younger and better than me, right? But I played on the church softball team. He played on the church softball team. We had a great time. He loved to jam on the piano. I loved to jam on the piano. We just spent time together. We developed fellowship. And then it went a little deeper. We got a little deeper into the pool. And we developed relationship. And we began to reach out and, and to see the needs that he had. 
and he would help me with my needs too and we would kind of reach over and help each other through relationship and then it got a little deeper and I, and, and, and I know that in that process he turned his heart over to Christ and I know that in that process I said hey back then I was playing the piano for the church and leading worship and I said hey would you like to come and join me up here and we were like dueling pianos up there man we were just up there playing for Jesus and we had the best time playing the piano together and he joined the worship band and then we went to praise and worship conferences together and you know and we we had this relationship and and uh, then he told me one day he goes you know what I think God's calling me to be a pastor and I said that's great Doug that is awesome God opened a door for him, not just to buy a building, but to buy a shopping center at I-30 and Beltline. There's a church today there. But he bought this shopping center, and he converted it into a church. And then uh, he pastored that church for years and years and years. And then, sadly, a few years ago, he developed a disease that... I don't remember the name of the disease, but it was a combination of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. And he got that disease, and about, I don't know what it was, maybe eight months ago, maybe a year ago, something like that, I went to his funeral. So I know that I know that I know that I won one because he's in heaven today. Other people, I don't know if, if they're one to Christ or not, or they belong to Christ or not. But I know Doug is. And it's all because somebody was willing to have a little fellowship, have a little relationship, have a little leadership with someone they don't yet know. We can all hang out in circles and in our own spheres and all that, but I challenge you, challenge you, challenge you, and that's what this card is all about that you have. And I challenge you to pray today. Some of you have been praying, but I want you to write down three names. There's a pencil in front of you. Three names that God is bringing to your heart right now that they could be the next Doug. You know what Doug did? Doug, because he uh, pastored a church and, and launched out, he ministered and saw hundreds and hundreds and maybe even thousands of people in his lifetime get saved. And because one was one, hundreds and maybe even thousands were potentially one. We don't know until they make it to heaven, right? But I want you just to write down those names. Maybe you've already got those names. And intentionally reach out to these people this week. Invite them to church. Try to change a life. Try to let God use you to change a life forever. Can we go to the Lord in prayer this morning? Maybe you're here. And maybe you say, man, I, I heard what you said about discipling myself, and I need to become better at that. I need to disciple, learn to disciple myself. And if you're real honest today, and you're here, or you need to strengthen your relationship with Jesus Christ further, or you need to renew your walk with Jesus, will you just slip your hand up in the air? Come on, all over the place. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Yes, anyone else? Don't miss your moment. Don't let pride. Yes, thank you. Don't let pride hold you back. I need to strengthen my relationship with Jesus. I need to be better in this area. Father, you saw each and every hand. I thank you, Lord, that as we open up our hearts and we say, Father, forgive us for our sins, for our mistakes, for our failures. And we thank you that you can, we hand those over to you and you can take those and you can turn our mistakes into great things for your kingdom. You can turn our failures into great successes for your kingdom. You can turn our uh, everything that we've done wrong into what's right for your kingdom. And we continue to ask you to give us opportunities to share our story. And Lord, we just hold on to this card that we have with these names on here. And God, we say that we will have the boldness. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the boldness and the power to be witnesses and we will reach out to these people this week. God, invite them to the cross, invite them and begin to lead them through relationship, fellowship, and leadership to where they need to be disciples for you. We give you glory, 
We give you honor. We give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can we give him, uh, give the Lord a hand? You showed me how to be a giver, and that's passed on to being an abundant giver to others. So I want you to, I want you to understand that you, it just, it's touched me in my life to see him the way he gives to everyone, not just me, who's really close to him and we spend a lot of time together, but to everybody. Like he's just an abundant giver. So I challenge you today, if you're not a giver or you've never tithed or something, but it, it's an amazing gift that God gives us. When we're a giver, he just overflows his blessings into our lives. So I challenge you today. If, you're, uh, if you've never tithed, tithe. If you've never been an abundant giver, be an abundant giver because it's given back to you so many times over and over again. So I challenge you on that today. Hey, a couple of announcements though. Next week, can everybody say Easter? Easter, Easter is the big week for our church, so please invite. I think it's like something like 80% of the people around will go to an Easter, an Easter service. So, so just ask, talk to somebody, ask them to invite them. We'll be here. Easter is a great, great Sunday. So please come show up, invite, invite, invite. Uh, one, one change though, and me and my wife, we, we do our merge group, but we were going to go ax throwing next Friday, realized that we scheduled it for good Friday. So we're not going to do that. We're going to follow We're going to push it to the next Friday. So please, if you want to go ax throwing, please come see me. We're going to do it April 9th. So please come be a part of that. I'm going to pray a prayer blessing over you this week so that you go in the glory of the Lord. Lord, we come before you today, Lord, and we say thank you. Thank you for uh, for showing us how to be a leader. Lord, we pray that we can be a leader to those who are lost. Lord, I pray that we can we can show a way for those to to come to grow closer to you, to come to church, to get baptized, to accept you, and then they'll be leaders for you also. Lord God, we pray that you would just be with us this week, that you would help us, give us boldness to invite those around. Lord God, I pray that you would just uh, show up in a mighty way and just use us in whatever way you see fit. Lord God, we thank you.